Hi, I'm Daniel Zengel with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb. And we're gonna be talking about a very exciting uh, application of PRP, which is can platelet-rich plasma be used to rejuvenate ovaries and reverse menopause? Uh, if so, that would be incredible. And there are a lot of uh, people on the internet talking about this. There's a lot, of, a lot of buzz around this using PRP for ovarian rejuvenation or menopause mm -hmm. reversal. And this all really started uh, back in 2016 when a, um, a hospital essentially presented their findings. There's a Greek hospital at the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology meeting in mm -hmm. Helsinki, uh, Finland in 2016 and uh, they presented some findings that seem to indicate that PRP yes can in fact uh, help reverse menopause um, but despite all the hype we're gonna take a closer look at this study and, and there may be some issues uh, so Don can you start off talking about this a bit sure so um, the study that was presented was um, an abstract slash poster at this at this conference. Right. Um, the, so far, there hasn't been a peer-reviewed publication. It's which, not published in any journal. No, no, okay. which, I mean, I'd love to see it. It's, yeah, me too. <laughs> um, but anyway, so according to this, uh, this abstract, um, the authors investigated if PRP could basically uh, restore uh, menstruation, pretty mm -hmm. much, essentially, in women. Um, so they reported on eight women. Mm -hmm. They all were of average age, 45, and they had been without a menstrual cycle for about four months. Okay. And they were given uh, what it was described as a PRP infusion into the ovaries, right. which I don't know what that means. Yeah, not very there, specific That was about... all the details that were given. Right. <laughs> um, so, so beyond the no details, um, so the authors claim that, that ovarian rejuvenation um, had occurred because they all recovered their menstrual cycle within one to three months mm -hmm. following um, this ovarian rejuvenation mm. technique. Got it. Um, so a few things about this. Um, so perimenopausal women will tend to experience uh, symptoms such as the beginnings of hot flashes, um, the the irregular periods, irregular mm -hmm. menstruation, um, infertility, right. eight to ten years uh, before they actually go through menopause, right. and the average age that a woman goes through menopause is around fifty. Okay. So these women were probably in. I mean, they're in the target range. They're in the target for range perimenopause. for perimenopause. Mm -hmm. um, so given that they had been, their menstruation had been off for four months, and then. Yet another like one to three months for it to restart. Right. It's some of the numbers aren't adding up to me necessarily. Maybe if I had more details about how how the procedure was done right. or like. Yeah, that is an interesting point to make. It's like yeah. you get a patient who's been having their menstrual cycle for decades or whatever, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they haven't had it for four months. They get enrolled in this study, and then one to three months later they have their period. Mm -hmm. To me, that seems within the range of possibility even without therapeutic intervention, right? Like yeah, a woman could go three, four, five months without having a period when she's going through her perimenopausal phase. Mm -hmm. that, that's definitely a possibility. Um, so I, I, just, I just think there should be more details. Also, I should mention too that they did mention what kind of PRP kit they use. Right. They use yeah. the Regen kit, Regen the gel kit. separator. Right. So, yeah. so we know we've reviewed Regen kit. You, you can look up our video on it. We did this a couple of weeks ago. and. It's one of these gel-based separating uh, PRP tubes, which uses a single centrifugation spin to produce PRP. And the mm -hmm. reason I'm using air quotes is because third-party analysis has shown that the plasma produced by these Regen kits uh, will, on average, have about half the platelet concentration levels of the patient's baseline blood levels. Uh, so in other words, it has less platelets than their whole blood. You couldn't truly call that platelet-rich plasma. If that's the case, it would be better referred to as platelet-poor Plate plasma. plasma. Yeah. So there, there still could be therapeutic outcomes because even platelet-poor plasma can have high concentrations of growth factors from the few mm -hmm. platelets that are left over. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's not to say that this couldn't be effective, but it is worth noting if they're gonna do a study on PRP 
for ovarian rejuvenation, they should probably actually use platelet-rich plasma. Yes, and and also, I mean, it should be noted that that you know, menopause is something that people still don't scientists still don't fully understand. It's a very complex process associated with aging, right. hormonal changes, bodily changes. There are just so many factors going in here. Mm. We're not saying it's not possible. Right. Yeah. No, it's definitely. You just possible. need more data. Absolutely, and and. It's, I think it's important to take a critical eye, too, because mm -hmm. there's so much hype. There's so much industry that's been created. I couldn't believe that, actually. Yeah, it's all over the internet. Go on Google. <laughs> Everyone is referencing this. They refer to it as if it's a study that's been published. No, this it, was a poster it, at a we're, presentation. We're pretty much talking about a poster at a yeah. presentation. Mind you, the poster itself, the, mm -hmm. the researchers presenting this poster, the lead researcher owns the hospital mm -hmm. that is promoting this, uh, this internal study that they did. So, you know, with, with published literature, there's always a need for uh, people to disclaim any relevant commercial financial interest they might have. Exactly. I think it's worth pointing out that the owner of this uh, clinic that deals with fertility issues in Greece might have some financial benefit from presenting findings that show mm -hmm. they're the ones who know how to reverse menopause with their secret process that they haven't actually disclosed in their paper. And additionally, in actually an interview that um, this this researcher gave for the New Scientist, mm -hmm. he had mentioned that he had started out with thirty patients. Yeah, he's, the he's, details are vague. He but says he's treated in this article that was published in two thousand sixteen, mm -hmm. right around the same time that this, this came was, out. This, this yes, was like a follow up right, interview. Yeah, this was one of those big hyped up articles right, that right. we're talking about. He mentions in the article on in the New Scientist mm -hmm. that he has treated roughly thirty women with these ovarian PRP injections. Um, and that's not mentioned in the abstract that mm -hmm. was presented. They only mention eight women. And it makes me wonder, did they cherry pick the eight women that had the best responses out of the 30? Or did it just so happen they were only looking at these eight women? We don't really know. Yeah, and I think also it's really necessary in research to like be accountable for what you put out there because mm -hmm. You know, it can a lot of a lot of women are very affected by menopause, right. and this this could this is something that impacts you know every woman at some point. Right. And I think that it's only fair if you're going to you know make these great claims that mm -hmm. you back it up with some sort of science, so you know yeah. other scientists can reproduce it and yeah. maybe make this into something that could help a lot of people. Right, and if it's a well done study, I'm sure there'd be a lot of journals who'd be very eager to publish this first of its kind research. Oh, definitely. Yeah, so it is curious that it hasn't been published anywhere. And you know, when you, when you present information that uh, can't be validated by your scientific peers with, with peer reviewed literature, you, you run the risk of misinforming people or creating false hope or worst case scenario, advocating for a therapy that could even be detrimental. Mm -hmm. And we might just not realize that um, because it hasn't been researched very well. And also, um, if, if too much false hope is consistently built up over a treatment, it could, it could be detrimental to to like the actual things that it does treat. Like for instance, it could give the treatment a bad right, name. Right, right, exactly. Like, if, if all of a sudden there's all this hype about PRP reversing mm -hmm. menopause, and then next year there's a study where someone actually like publishes an article, does it right, and finds out no, PRP mm -hmm. can't, then that, that adds credence to this argument that other people have, which is PRP is just voodoo science, or you know, it's not a real exactly. thing anyway. Every time uh, we have to take a step back like that, it can have a big impact on the PRP industry as a whole. Yeah, and there are lots of researchers out there taking a very critical eye, being very skeptical, asking the right questions, and really publishing some really good studies too, to yeah. back to support you know, the actual therapeutic effects of this. So right. it, would be, it would be nice to see if, if there is a therapeutic effect, right. that the actual data to support it. Right, yeah. So the big question, Don, can PRP reverse menopause? We don't know. No, we don't know. <laughs> so we'll, we'll let you know if we ever find out the answer. All right. Uh, so we're going to have uh, at least another video on PRP coming right up. So stay tuned, and we will be right back.